Sisters and brothers, good evening. You're not going to get a speech from me in the way that some people think you're going to get because there's some programs on your table and what you really need to know is in that. Because the question posed earlier about prejudices, uh, it's not so much about my prejudice, but what I hate most is people who've got power to do something about inequalities, injustices, and unfair treatment doing absolutely bugger all. And that's the bottom line in all of this. I want to thank you all for being here tonight because you're all very special people. A special for coming to support Kick It Out and also to give recognition to the many of you in this place tonight who are the foot soldiers, who are the people that do the work 24-7 working with disadvantaged and vulnerable communities, using football as a way of challenging prejudice, discrimination, and exclusion. And I pay tribute tonight to all the thousands of people around the country who do that every day, at weekends, who put in the work to enable particularly the next generation to become the leaders in our society with better attitudes, who've been able to face up to prejudice and who are prepared to give respect to other people, whatever their background, whatever their circumstances, wherever they are. And so tonight what I want to do is to pay tribute to some of the people who have helped us along the way. It's a very dangerous road to go down because inevitably I will miss people and I don't want you to feel offended because I genuinely want to say thank you to everyone in the struggle. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you and the many others out there who are challenging prejudice by their actions. I'd like firstly to thank Gordon Brown for the mesmeric speech that he gave us tonight. It was absolutely stunning. And thank him very much, along with Sarah, for coming and joining us tonight and sharing uh, some of his experiences with us and giving us some upliftment. And I'm delighted we're going to hear from Jeffrey Webb soon, who's another one of our many distinguished guests tonight, who's uh, bringing some order to CONCAF and hopefully to FIFA and help to drive us on uh, and other national associations to do what we have to do. It may sound strange me saying we look to FIFA to tell us where we need to take things on, but we, we want them to be a credible body that's driving the standards globally. You're going to hear later on, right at the end, with, from another one of our distinguished guests, and I won't say any more at this stage, but Heather Abatz is, is one of the people who've been in the struggle, right at the forefront of it, and she's uh, in a very difficult place at the moment, uh, for, and I won't say any more, um, because I think probably people have been talking about these issues uh, all night on their table. But a quick word for support for charity. These are the people who put this together. And when they came to us and said, we want to put something together to show our appreciation for Kick It Out and all you've done and try and raise some money, uh, I was a bit worried. And we're still worried, because I don't think we're going to make any money, uh, which was one of the aims. Uh, but I think it's a grand occasion to come along and say thank you to the people who supported us and the, the people who are genuinely committed through direct action to helping football to become a sport that we can be absolutely proud of. Howard Keeney and Tarim Promotions has been right at the forefront of helping to fill this room. He wanted a top table, but we had to abandon it because he had about 200 people on it. <laughs> and of course, Michelle Vickers, who came in at the last moment and helped us to make the event uh, possible. I must say some thank yous to our trustees, 
Uh, Sue Olorenshaw and her team, and the great work they do in supporting what we do at the FA. Cathy Long from the Premier League, and once again, tremendous support, working uh, with each other. Ify Onura is our latest, uh, newest trustee from the PFA, but we pay tribute to the work done by Simone Pound over the years, and before that, Bobby Barnes. Garth Crooks, who you'll hear from later on, he said to me back in 1993, do you, he was rather worried about my mental health, because he said, you know, do you know what you're taking on, taking on the football authorities? Uh, well, a, a bit more I might say about that. And Leroy Rosinia, who must have been a very proud father seeing his son perform at Wembley uh, last Sunday. The Kick It Out staff are Trojans, not only the ones in post, but all the ones who've been in post over the last 20 years. And Rasheen Wood leads our team of staff and volunteers, and they've been absolutely tremendous in the work that they've done, building coalitions and partnerships, working across communities, working across uh, all those concerned, uh, and, and with all those concerned in fighting discrimination and exclusion. They're a dedicated bunch, and I pay tribute to them. A few more extra special thanks to some of the people from organizations we've worked and relied on over the years. Brian Marwood, when he was chairman of the PFA right at the beginning, was with us. Uh, and Paul Davis, who was there, and he's still there now. Uh, he's been with us from day one. And thank you, Paul. Howard Holmes is someone who is amazing. He's been doing work for longer than Kick It Out, and when Kick It Out vanishes, which one day it's got to, uh, Howard Holmes will still be going, going. He does fantastic work in Sheffield. Football unites racism divides. He's now with FAIR, working with Piara across Europe. He's got amazing stamina, uh, perseverance, dedication, and above all, integrity. Uh, when the Football Trust, before the Football Foundation was around, we had Peter Lee and Richard Faulkner, both helpful. The LMA, John Barnwell, to be followed by Frank Clark. And Frank is a real, true stalwart. Uh, and we love you, Frank, and thank you for all your help. Uh, we must say a thank you to the collaborative work done by Show Races and the Red Card, Jed Grebby and his team. Guys, thank you very much. You do a fantastic job. And we, we're delighted to say thank you. Uh, Rimla Akhtar is here tonight. She not only uh, pushes the boat out with regards to Muslim women in sport, but she's a champion uh, on behalf of women uh, in football as well. Joyce Cook, looking after the interests of disabled supporters, disabled people in football, uh, with level playing fields, uh, and tremendous work. And, and Joyce, I pay tribute to you and the way in which you've had to deal with the sad loss of Gary Deards, who died recently and suddenly. And these are, these are people who are fantastic in what they've done for football at grassroots level, and in the professional sector. Uh, Piara Power, I couldn't not mention. He's been with us through the struggles, through thick and thin. He took us from level one to level two, which is where we're at and we're, we're moving on. Uh, but Piara uh, made a huge contribution, well respected. He's now applying his trade in, in across Europe and trying to uh, bring people out of the dark ages. And, uh, if he can't get them to the 21st century, if he hopefully can get them to the 20th century. But it's some great networking that PR has done. And for a while, he was assisted by Alison Vaughan, who did fantastic work with us as his number two uh, and led the team for a while. Uh, there was some time ago where Alison Vaughan said to me, uh, there's going to be a huge blue moon rising over Manchester. And I said, this woman's deluded. Well, now she's smiling, and I'm uh, totally wrong. Uh, Paul Elliott uh, was one of our trustees until recently. And I have to say to you, for those of you who don't know Paul Elliott, let me tell you a story about Paul Elliott. There is no one, no one, who I could put above Paul Elliott in the work that he's done to make Kick It Out the organization that it is. <laughs> and what I mean by that is Paul Elliott from day one, along with Justin Fashionu, among others, were there when we said we were going to start this campaign. And Paul has been around the country to schools, to youth clubs, to colleges, to universities, to faith groups, to football clubs, preaching to young people and adults 
about prejudice, discrimination, disadvantage, and all the things we all care passionately about, the things that Gordon Brown uh, spoke to us about earlier. And Paul has done so without looking for any compensation. He hasn't looked to kick it out to pay his fears uh, or to receive any in-kind gestures. That's what you call dedication. And what Paul has got above anything else is when he made a very simple mistake in a very private matter, he had the integrity to stand down because he was a public figure and he recognized that you can't go around preaching equality and to deal with the matters of the, the, the respectful treatment of other people if you don't, at every stage, do it yourself. And I'm And Paul, at the moment, is, he's taken his efforts, his integrity, and his activities across Europe. He's a UAVA special envoy or ambassador, and he's been out in Israel recently, talking about the issues of, of Kick It Out. And that's the sort of dedicated person we've had commitments from, to get out there and work selflessly and honorably in serving our communities. And more people like that will help us to get to where we've got to get to. Uh, those are some of the people, and right new on the block is obviously someone like Clark Carlisle, who's picking up the mantle, and he's not only serving football, but he's out there in other respects spreading the message. And we thank you, Clark. And there's one other person I'm going to mention, and he's not necessarily part of this scene, but he reflects some of the grassroots activities that are so important, and he's been in a struggle with me a long time. And his name is Bob Perkis. Now, Bob Perkis has been fighting the battles down in Hampshire and Wessex, where you don't necessarily see a lot of black people. But he's been fighting those battles in his own way. But Bob stood with me when he was a commissioner at the Commission for Racial Equality. And let me tell you that when I was there, the Home Secretary of the day put about half a dozen commissioners to use a word that's in vogue at the moment, to shaft me. And on one occasion, we had a meeting in Manchester, and I had to go off to do an interview for the BBC, which was pre-recorded for the next morning, the Today program. And while I was out of the room, I think Bob was stepped into the chair, and the meeting continued. And when I came back, the commissioners made a decision that the CRE would no longer be supporting Kick It Out, and it would no longer be involved in Kick It Out. Well, he, he knew why he told me what that decision was, because he knew I would hit the roof. And boy, did I hit the roof. This guy ain't for shafting, believe you me. We overturned that decision, and that's why, and Bob will tell you the story, that's why we're still here. Right, Bob? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Look, when we started Kick It Out in 1993, we didn't know where we were going to get to. Um, and as I mentioned before, Garth Crooks tried to warn me off by telling me I was up against the odds. And it was quite clear that players needed support because black players, people like John Fashionu, Paul Elliott and others were saying our families and friends don't come and watch football anymore because they can't stand the shit that's flying around. Um, and they're too embarrassed, and grossly uh, sick about what goes on there. But the players had to put up with it. And players like Brendan and Cyril, who are here tonight as part of the uh, magnificent lot that were West Brom at the present time, and you'll hear some more from them later on, were, were people who were right in the struggle uh, with us from day one. You will also hear from the people who really stood by us from within the authorities at that moment when we needed help. David Dean, David Davis, and Gordon Taylor. And Gordon was right up there and has always been there because his members were taking the brunt of it. Yes, of course, as black fans going to football, we were taking plenty of shit as well. And I stopped going to football because I got fed up of sitting around watching seats being smashed up, blood flowing everywhere, glasses and bottles flying all over the place, Stuart standing like that, not seeing anything when the police come along. And no one was interested in taking action. And we thought we had to do something about it. 
And that's what we've been trying to do. Where I think we're at now is we're beginning to see some of the fear being removed from players who are conditioned by the culture of silence and fear in the dressing rooms on the training ground. The assertiveness shown by Prince Boateng and during this season by Yaya Toure is setting the agenda of change. I've said from day one, and Gordon Taylor may not like me for saying it, um, and some people also may not like it, but the players, and especially the black players, asserting themselves can make a difference. Direct action has always been the right action to bring about change. And when, <laughs> when Boateng walked off the pitch, for me that was a very important signal of direct action and raising the stakes. When Yaya Toure said, my black brothers probably ain't going to go to the World Cup if you guys are not going to give us the respect we deserve and take action to put this, uh, this business right. And we've seen some of the black players here taking direct action to enhance their own prospects to get into the boardroom, to develop programs for increasing the numbers of uh, black and ethnic minority people in coaching and indeed for women and I think it's quite important with, to recognize and acknowledge the support of the FA, the PFA and the LMA in helping that process. But what I'm trying to say is that at one level we have a situation where players have to be loyal to their clubs uh, and their country but it's no reason why they have to put up with this crap and expect kick it out to sort it out for it. When Jason Roberts and others said they weren't going to wear the T-shirt, they were right to say they weren't going to wear the T-shirt. The trouble is they pointed their bazookas at the wrong people. It should have been pointed at the administrators in this building, in the Premier League, the people who run the football clubs, because they're the people with the power who are not delivering for them but they have got to start to assert themselves. We've reached the point where the confidence is there. And that's what we want to see more from women in football as well. We want to see women asserting themselves. We know that the, the game is moving ahead uh, with rapid pace. And it's very important that we see that. We, the, the, the most important thing we get from women and disabled football is we don't get any of the nastiness we get in men's football. You go to any football match where there are women playing, where there are disabled people, and you don't get the nastiness, the horrible stuff you get in men's football. And I'm glad to say the work of the FA with its respect campaign is beginning to make a difference uh, with the upcoming next generation. And that's where our focus has been. Our education work is about the next generation. The next generation have got to come through better than this generation in facing up to prejudice, in helping them to understand uh, bigotry, uh, overcoming their own ignorance. And that's working tremendously well, but we've got to do a lot more. Uh, I've only got 10 minutes to speak, and I've probably spoken for 15, so let me just uh, wrap this up and say that with all the discussion we've had this past week about sexism in the workplace, in football, and women's prospects in football. And it's right that we should, and it's very important we don't lose sight of that. We must also recognize that the agenda that we have in Kick It Out is the agenda that British society needs to have. And that's to deal with racism, sexism, homophobia, disabledism, Islamophobia, and any other forms of exclusion. We've got to see women, black and ethnic minority people and other excluded groups represented at the top table. But the fundamental message that I want you to take with you tonight, and if you haven't got a copy of the program which has the notes that I wrote for this event about where we've come from, where we're at and where we've got to get to, it's this, that the people who've got the power, who've got the resources and who make the decisions have got to make this happen. We're not going to get sustainable change if people think it's Kick It Out going to do it. Kick It Out and all the people and the partners we work with are beavering away and will continue to do so. And it's right that they should get the support that they do to continue to do that. 
But if those who are cocooned in the boardrooms and in the senior management teams think that equality is happening because they turn out once a year, put on the badges, get the stickers out, roll out the banners, wear the t-shirts and say, yippee, see you next year, that is not what this is all about. It's about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis to engage with your communities, all communities from all backgrounds, and make sure we see inclusion uh, happening in football. Friends, there is a lot that we can talk about, and there's a lot of controversy raging. Uh, I've always believed you take a negative to a positive. You take two negatives we've had in the last few years, uh, the negative about Suarez, the negative about John Terry. I think the only thing I would say is that if you look at what Liverpool and Chelsea are doing now subsequent to what was going on at then, uh, I take my hat off and pay tribute to all the work that they're doing. And I think that's what we've got to look at these situations. There's some bad situations, and we've got to use our best endeavours to make them right. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for listening. And thank you to all of you for what you're going to go on doing.